terms of their play, they're really still up there. Unfortunately, the rankings have changed. Teams like Nigeria and Tunisia has, has moved up yeah. and put some pressure on them. Um, but in terms of their, their professionalism and their approach to the game, they haven't dropped that. Um, but in terms of them catching up or, or improving their rankings against teams like um, Nigeria and Tunisia, um, that is a task now for them. Mm -hmm. Because most of those teams uh, bring in international players yeah. during their yeah. competitions. So that means players who are playing in Europe, in the U.S. Um, professionally yeah. are coming now back, uh, although second or third generation players that are yeah. born internationally and then come back and play for their country. So that is helping them and Angola is still staying true to their, to their players. The yeah. majority of their players are actually from, from, from Angola. You have, a, you have a few players that are playing up, but most of their national teams are always consistent from their from their local players, from their from lo, lo, locally. So this is a problem or a trend we are seeing now. Not just in basketball, what you mentioned about what's happening in Tunisia and Nigeria with regards to uh, second generation uh, players coming from abroad. It's yeah. now a trend that's happening in football now to the west of the continent quite a lot, okay. and in the north, where Algeria, for instance, has a very good. Uh, league, very good teams that compete at the highest level on the continent as far as the African club competitions, but their national team doesn't quite reflect that. Exactly. They'll go for second division players and so on. Yeah. In uh, the uh, European leagues or players that... Uh, yeah, and that serves the purpose of competition. Such. Yep. Yeah, that serves the purpose of competition. But what Angola has done throughout the whole games is just take that away from him completely. So they made it so difficult for him just to get that jump shot because they have seen him in the 3-on-3 three and three in a previous competition, the CX3, and the previous competitions that he can be. <laughs> Fernandez doing a, if I can put it like this, he's doing a Manguera. <laughs> Fernandez picking up there where Manguera has left off. Yeah, certainly is. Now, the Zambians here with the machine. Ah, oh, it's beautifully done by machine here. He was being hounded in that corner, shook him up and got the uh, jump up. Yeah, he, he, he has a decent jump shot. Yeah. He has a decent pull up jump shot. But what Angola has done throughout the whole games is just take that away from him completely. So they made it so difficult for him just to get that jump shot because they have seen him in the 3-on-3 three three in a previous competition, the CX3, and the previous competitions that he can make that, that, that mid-range jump shot. David C. Machinga trying to get also a, a mid-range jump shot and unable to finish on that. In a game, 20 or 30, and let's see what happens. Let him, let, me, let him have more of those jump shots in the game, and I'm sure the result will be a bit different. Now, it's uh, the Zambians again here with uh, some gamba. The stops. And uh, immediately, there's a goal and a bring it forward. Mm. Well, they aren't able to uh, bag the uh, two then. Started to celebrate after the uh, bench had to leave. A few of the uh, teammates watching on from the bench up on their feet. And uh, every now and then shouts and go uh, in a celebratory uh, fashion to let you know that the clock is winding down now. There's just about a minute remaining. There they are, top of your picture. Yeah, and that is beautiful to watch for a team with such a big lead and yeah. still be happy about their victory yeah. and not act like this is nothing for them. So that is really good to see and under, and gives us, a, gives us an insight of their mindset of what competition is for them. 